Welcome back everyone, my name is David and this is my 2004 Jeep Wrangler TJ. In this video we're going to be installing this ARB rear tire carrier. So we'll just get straight into it. So this is the rear bar I got, it's an ARB rear tire carrier. Super heavy duty, from ARB new, this is about $2,700 or $2,800. I was super lucky, I got it from a local seller that was second, selling it second hand. It's actually brand new, he never fit it, and I got it for $850. So I'm super stoked with the price I got it for. I would never buy one of these for $2,700 new. I don't think you could justify spending that much on a $6,000 Jeep, but I'm super happy that I got it. So the current rear setup needs to be removed. We're gonna remove the rear bumper, the tow bar, and the rear tire and the mount that it uses now and that's all going to go to the side i'll probably try to sell it with the bar i got for 850 i'm hoping to recoup some money as well selling this rear bumper hopefully get 100 bucks for that and the tow bar maybe 150 200 dollars as well so it brings the total cost of that rear bar down even further so the, currently the rear tire mounts to the rear door so that's something that that's not going to happen anymore so the only downside to a rear bar like this is that you've got to open the tire carrier and then you've got to open the door. So it does make it a bit more frustrating to get something from the back quickly, um, but I think this is going to be a great upgrade. It is going to bring all this stuff a bit higher as well, so I'm not going to hit the tow bar as often. But we'll just get straight into it. I'll probably start with taking the rear tire off and then we'll take the rear bumper off, number plate, lights and everything. So to even just fit a 30 inch tire going out from the stock, I think the stock is uh, 28 or 27, you need to fit spaces. So these are the spaces I use to keep the rear brake light. So this is something we're not going to need anymore. Another good thing about this rear bar, it will now allow me to clean this back section of the car because currently I can't clean it. So that's the rear tire carrier taken off now. I'll probably put the old bolts back in just to stop water getting inside the car. The old wiring system, I'll read the instructions, we'll work out what to do with that eventually. So we've got to take off the rear bar now, the number plate, some more wiring behind there, and we've got to take out the tow bar as well because that's all going to get removed. So we've got everything removed now, tow bar, rear bar, and uh, the rear tire carrier. So it'll be interesting to see how much all that weighs and compare it to what we're going to be putting on the car. This is everything that we've removed, so we've got the tow bar, rear bar, all the bolts, rear tire carrier and everything. The only thing we're going to be putting back on is this piece here, the rear brake light. So we've got the rear bar now, so we'll start working out what we need to put onto this. And I'll grab the instruction booklet. Alright, so that's everything we have to do on the rear bar for now. We'll now bring over the tyre carrier and start working on that. Again, you can see I was super lucky getting this rear bar. It's literally brand new, never fitted. Uh, it's literally got the wrapping still on it. So we'll just install this mechanism now. This is how you're gonna open it every time. So we need to install these brackets, these are the brackets that mount the actual rear bar to the car. To make it a bit easy, I'm just going to take both side mud flaps off as well. Alright, so we're about to install the side bracket here, just on the driver's side first. 
For all the bolts on this, I've been using blue Loctite just to make sure everything stays nice and tight. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so it's time to test fit the bar. We just need to test fit it because we need to drill four holes into the body here. So I'll just grab it and put it on. So with this rear bar, you need to consider it isn't just a fully bolt-on rear bar. You do need to drill some holes into your car. There's four holes that you need to drill here. And then on the side, I noticed I did have to drill these two holes out. In the instructions, it doesn't say to, but the bolts didn't line up properly. So it went from a probably like a 12 mil hole, just probably up to like 16 mil. So that's something you need to consider as well. It isn't completely um, this bolt-on. So we'll finish up drilling these holes. This is just to hold the center mounting point, just to reinforce the bar. So to get this uh, rear bracket in, I've just put a couple zip ties through the cage nuts. And I'm just gonna drop it behind. I'm not sure if this is actually gonna work. So that zip tie trick actually did help and then I got the big nuts in first. We'll have to remove these again to get the rear bar on. But the point of it is just to get these little M6 nuts on. These M6 nuts hold on that mount to, for when you take these big bolts out, bring the big bar across. So I tighten up these little M6 nuts. They look like they're 10 millimeter. Then I'll take these ones out. All right, so that's nice and tight. We can take out the big M12 nuts. So we'll bring the rear bar over now. I'm just gonna spray some uh, inox just on the positions where it's gonna be metal on metal contact. It will just help slide it on, but also help with um, any rust in the future. So I am adding up all the weight of the rear bar, see how much it's gonna load up the car compared to the old stuff. Just this rear bar, I weighed it and it weighs 31.6 kilos. So it, it is gonna be a very heavy kit. I'm expecting all up, it's gonna probably be around probably 60, 60 kilos-ish. But keep in mind we did remove probably I haven't weighed it up, but probably maybe 25 kilos. So we'll just bring this across and mount it on. So that's the rear bar positioned onto the Jeep now. We just need to bolt it on, but I do want to still keep track of all the hardware that I use and its weight. So I'll go get the kitchen scales and I'll start weighing everything while I put it on. All right, I finally finished tightening up all the bolts for the rear bar. It is a lot of work to get this done. You have to drill into the frame of the car. Uh, on this side, you have to drill a, a hole into the frame as well. And once you get everything bolted together, there's another four holes you have to do. They're called pinning holes that you have to drill through. So that's another 13 millimeter one. You have to drill through two layers of plate and then they get bolted down together as well. So it is a lot of work just to get to this point. Next thing we need to do is just put the swing arm on. It's just held on with a giant, uh, I think 20 millimeter bolt. So we'll bring the carrier across and then just bolt it on. I'll just lift up the glass. It's just one less thing to break if I actually drop the carrier or something.
right, so I've got to bolt it on. So we just need to install this cover plate now. This goes on here. It uses uh, four bolts, so we'll do that now. This piece is merely just for cosmetics. Uh, it weighs a lot for something that isn't really required. It's nearly 1.6 kilos, just this piece of metal. So we'll install the rear tail light now. The good thing about the ALB rear tire carrier allows you to just install the original one straight on. So we now need to test fit the rear tire carrier itself. So I've hammered in the lugs. We'll just put this on like this. So we'll put the tire on and we're just gonna make sure it's in the right spot and then we're just gonna drill another hole from underneath. So I'll grab the tire now. So I've just finished adjusting this bracket. There's one hole we need to drill to put another nut through. And that's just to, so the carry is now adjusted to the tires that I have. So I'll drill that out. So this is a 10 millimeter hole. So we'll drill that out and um, put the nut through. So I've drilled the hole underneath and tightened it. The next thing we need to do is actually wire up the rear brake light now. So it came with a wiring kit. So we'll probably just tap power from the light from here and just run it across and I'll zip tie the cabling up on this bar. So I'll do that now. So I'm tapping into the rear brake light, the original one. I'm just gonna use these connections. These are the ones that came with ARB. They're not the best, but it's nice and easy. And it's nice and waterproof pretty much in here anyways. So all the wiring for the brake light's now done, so we can put the tire on for the last time. So the spare tire's mounted now, we just need to work out the number plate. So I've been trying to work out what to do with the number plate. Uh, the original mounting bracket is a two-piece design and this piece goes behind the tire and then you have to take the center cap out of the tire as well and it goes here and then this slides on. I don't want to do that because I want a wheel bag eventually so I'm not going to do that. This bracket as well also this weighs 500 grams so that's one less thing we can have on the car. So I'm going to use the original bracket that we have here for up here just because it has a good spot for where the light needs to go. I am going to cut off this back piece, so that's going to get cut off. I'm going to repaint it once I drill some more holes. And the mount's going to go down here, just like that. So I'll have the light here, number plate, and it's just going to be a perfect little spot for it. So we'll just get into cutting up that bracket and repainting it.
All right, so that's the bracket all ready to go. We'll just do a quick test fit before painting. So this is about where the bracket's gonna go with the number plate. So it's gonna go about there. So we just gotta drill only two holes in the bar. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we'll just mark up those two holes and drill them out. So I got the hole drill now. We'll do one side at a time. So I got the rib nut tool here. So we'll put this in. I'm just gonna touch it up with a bit of paint and a bit of silicone. And then we'll put this in and then line up the next hole. And that's it, all done. So I'm just gonna mount this quickly just to test fit it, just to line up the next hole and make it nice and straight. So I've just finished up the number plate and mount. The light's mounted, it's all freshly painted. So we'll just grab the number plate and we can mount it straight on. So it's all mounted now, we just gotta do some wiring. So we'll just solder these connections together. So after two long days, I finally finished installing the ARB rear tire carrier. Uh, really happy with how it's turned out. All the parts worked really well with the Jeep. It opens up just with a little latch here. And it has a gas strut on to help open it up as well. But yeah, really happy with how it's turned out. Highly recommend this rear bar. For $2,800, it is a very expensive kit. Uh, but I got it for, after I sold the other two parts, I've only spent $550 with this. So I'm seriously happy with that price. I don't think you could even get a brand new tow bar for $550 these days. Uh, so yeah, it's turned out great. Um, so the rear bar itself weighs 64 kilos, not including the tire, that's the arm, the new whole rear bar. It has an integrated tow bar as well. So yeah, 64 kilos for that. All the stuff that I've taken off, including the tire carrier that mounts here, weighed 36 kilos. So in total, we've added 28 kilos to the rear bar. Uh, so it's not the greatest, but I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, the rear bar hugs the side of the car really well. It brings everything up much higher, has a much better departure angle now as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. I didn't see anyone else installing the ARB rear bar on a TJ on YouTube or anything like that. So I hope you, yeah, you, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.